Hi, so today we will continue the system call with an example. Okay, we know what is a system call. System call provides an interface to the services made by an operating system. So, we will uh, see an example, a simple example of uh, how a system call is made. So, here is an example of a system call sequence for writing a simple program to read data from one file and copying them to an other file. So, here we have a source file and we want to copy the source file to the destination file or the output file. So, we will see how the system calls are made for this simple task. So, here are the first sequence of system calls that will be required. So, first of all, in order to copy the contents of an input file to an output file, we need to get the name of the input file. We need to know which is our input file from which we are going to copy the contents. So, the first step is to acquire the input file name. So, we need a system call in order to acquire the input file name. And then we write a prompt to the screen. That means we are displaying a prompt on the screen asking the user to enter the name of the input file. So for writing a prompt to the screen you need another system call and then you need to accept the input that the user gives you. So far we need another system call. So all these boxes represent individual system call. So now let's start from the beginning. We need to first acquire the input file name. So to do that there are two ways. One way is to ask the user to enter the name of the input file. Otherwise in the second option we can display the files that we can have in the system and we can ask the user to browse through those files and select the input file using his mouse or other clicking or pointing devices. He can just select the file. So in either way for acquiring the input file name and for writing the prompt to the screen that means asking the user please enter your input file and for accepting the inputs we need system calls. So as I told you the system calls are made when we want to access some resources of the system. So for acquiring an input file name we need a system call. Writing the prompt to the screen we know that you have to display the prompt on your screen or monitor. So we are going to use the hardware output device. So we need a system call for access accessing that hardware and then and then for asking you need to take the input using either the keyboard or the mouse so your keyboard or mouses or the input devices for that also you need system call because we are accessing the hardware which is our input device all right so these are the first three system calls that are required for the process now after we get the input file name that means the file to which we are going to copy the contents, the destination file name. So far that we need to acquire the output file name. For that also we need a system call. And then we have to write the prompt to the screen monitor by asking the user please enter the name of your output file. So for that to display on the screen we need a system call and then we need to access the inputs. That means when the user enters the names of the output file using his keyboard we need to accept the input. So for accepting the input we need another system call. Alright so moving on now we got the input and output file names. Now what we have to do is we have to open the input file so that we can start copying the things from that input file. So for opening the input file we need to access the input file which is there in our memory. For that we need another system call again. Now if the file doesn't exist then we have to abort. So there can be errors that can occur. There may be a case that the input file that the user entered does not actually exist in your system. So if the file doesn't exist then you need to abort. You need to terminate your executions. Even for doing that also we need a system call. Now in the same way you have to then create the output file. So the output file name that the user entered you have to create an output file using the file name that the user entered. Now if the file exists then also you have to abort. Why? Because we are trying to create a new file into which we are going to copy the contents of the source file to the destination file. Now the name of the output or the destination file that you have provided if it already exists then you cannot create the 
output file you have to create a new file you are not allowed to create a file that already exists so if you find that the file already exists then you have to abort so for that also you need a system call so for creating the output file you need a system call and if you find that the output file already exists so if you find a file with the same name is already exists then you have to abort or terminate your execution so even for that you need a system call